I'm um, Disney, right? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm kidding, chat. I promise you, I'm kidding. All right, so we have Team Beat Meat and Muscle over there. We have, I'm gonna say, yeah, we do have Ganon and Simon Belmont. <laughs> meat and Muscle versus, well, technology. Cause my man got a bionic eye and steel legs versus a full-on robot. Bro, this is why we don't let Tios in the bracket. <laughs> who let, who let Ganon go Simon this deep? We actually do have two TOs. Like, we have the head TOs, Philadelphia, and we have the TO of Buzz Calamity and Splatoon 2 here. Like, it, this is crazy, but they are doing the darn thing here in Losers Top 8 versus House of 3000s, Dill and Ralphie. I'm excited to see how this one goes. But, I mean, again, just meat and muscle. I just, look at all this power. Never mind, I can't stand up to a still leg. Yeah, no, there's only so much you can do about that. Great recovery from Rickles, but he's gonna, be, <laughs> he's gonna be doing his best to try and just stay just barely out of the zone of <laughs> zone of effect from Wolf and Rob. <laughs> but both oh, members of Yellow Team are gonna be able to hit. Did you hard. see that? How are these guys? They don't play together. They don't know each other. They, just, well, they know each other, but they don't. They haven't really played. And yet we just saw two immaculate combos. The flame joke, flame choke, jumped, baiting the attack just to, for the quick KO from. The Belmont. These two are putting in some immaculate work. Moose did just lose his, but we have a Ganon that's sitting at 180. That shield is going to get a lot of work today. Yeah, no, this is just, it's a very weird matchup. You can't really judge this one based off of like regular dubs play. Ganondorf is very much in the same uh, kin of Little Mac being the cannon, but Ganon is a lot more mobile. Like, this man is the whole armada in one package. Yeah, man, I don't know. Yeah, who? Gave the green light for Ganon to have the nail that he does. Or the back air. I don't or know. Or the up air. He's bringing a lot of power at the cost of little speed and pretty mediocre recovery. But we've seen that Wrinkles knows how to get himself around the ledge. And more importantly, Moosh has been very aware of where Wrinkles wants to be. So he's trying to clear that space with projectiles. So a very unorthodox team. But it's a team that's working out as Ralphie finds himself on his last stock. And normally... Dill is able to control a lot of space really well with Rob's tools, both his boxing tools as well as his projectiles. Oh, no. But he's not allowed to do that because he's constantly got a Belmont on his tail, and anytime he's got room to breathe, Rickles trying to put down the boot. Yeah, we have a lot of range coming out. As a matter of fact, thinking about that, we have two big meat, meat and muscly characters, one with godlike close range combo and one with a, a really far range annoying policy. These two characters are going to make it really difficult for Rob and Wolf to really close in. And I mean, even though we have two characters who also have their own, you know, their own strength, we have projectiles coming out from Rob. We have the laser coming out from Wolf. They have a great close <laughs> range game, but these two together. I don't think they have a strength, more so a balance. And they have two characters, facing two characters with strengths, uh, might not work out in their favor. I mean, we're already looking at a 2v1. This is like the worst possible team that R Ralphie and Dill could have ran into because you take away all of, Wol like, what makes Wolf such a prominent <laughs> character in, in, like, Ultimate's meta when you just put, like, these beef houses against them, able to swing at beef. any range. House. That meat and muscle, <laughs> just let it all hang out. <laughs> oh, That's game man. one, though. That, that was game one, and that was just a husky match. That was thick I, in all the right ways, in long ways. That's thick with a lot of Cs. In questionable ways. Definitely questionable, because like I said, a very unorthodox duo to see like deep into a bracket, but also to be seen like piloted so effectively. Like, Belmont's been a character that everyone likes to see, but is well regarded as being like, Really good in certain matchups, bad in other places. But when his job is just to control the mid space and to be quick to cover Ganondorf, he works out really well. This is a very strange sense of synergy. I just, I can't say I saw this one coming, but I am happy to be seeing it all the same. These two are putting in a lot of work. And I just, I mean, again, who have ever seen Ganondorf and Belmont, of all things, really come through in such a really well done way. But here we have a situation where the music is fitting the situation perfectly. Bob was carrying Ganondorf all stage and that's what he has to worry about. If Bob gets going on any of these heavyweights, it's going to take his teammate to really save him. That's what but I'm only, talking about. Okay. Look at this. Okay. All right. Oh, still doing everything he can to protect his teammate. That was his beautiful. His son fully defended and a team kill on yellow team's half. Best case scenario. Yo, good timing by 
by Rick was right there. Excuse me, but yeah, that oh, was just really bro. husky. Really good play. Perfect shielding that attack and getting the whole KO for his troubles as well. But there we go. Moose as well. Losing that stock. Getting a good throw on Rob. And now it's, I'm sorry, on Wolf. And putting on a lot of pressure on the right side trying to separate them. We're seeing some great team play from both of these teams right now. I swear, watching Yellow Team converge on one player is like watching the shark from Jaws hunt down its next victim. Nah, nah. Nah, They're nah, both nah, nah, so nah. slow. You see them from a mile away. <laughs> and in any normal situation, this would be so simple for Rob and Wolf to just swat away like flies. Oh, but no. When both of these characters are on top of one target, and they're both so aware of how poor their movement options are that they're able to just mix around each other. Oh, that was so good. He, he trapped him into the corner while Ganondorf is making his recovery. That was fantastic. Um, not able to really help him out there, but I mean, it was, it was a good idea. But yeah, thinking about it, we do have a lot of similar plays coming out between Belmont and Rob. That gyro and the holy water both are being set there as a trap to really set up some combo. But that down smash just doing so much damage to sending the Belmont off to the stage. And the Ganon being sent way off. Get, um, Belmont not being able to do much on his own. And he is going to come back, but still damage-wise, ooh, might want to step it up. Yellow team, might want to step it up. See, that, now here's the fault where you see these two characters. Like, Red Team has done a great job of trying to, like, compress a lot of this damage down. They keep the battle all bottled up. Ganondorf's gonna hit everyone when he swings, and Simon's gonna hit no one because he has no good close-range options. And just like that, we've seen Red Team start to tie up this match a lot closer. They need to secure a kill on at least one of these members, though. But unfortunately, for Yellow Team... Oh, wait, no. I'm speaking too soon. It's not too late, but that Rob is going to be elusive. You have a character with high damage that is going to be, um, that has a good amount of projectiles as a high damage. He's going to be playing back line. You're going to see gyros, you're going to see lasers, but you're not going to see him. So right now, this is up to Rickles to really pummel through this wolf or just get, a, get slashed for his troubles. Critical hit, throwing him way into the blast zone and letting them know, we are not out of the woods yet. You better keep staying on your P's and Q's. Look at those T.O.'s. like, man, I probably shouldn't have put myself out of bracket. <laughs> and now as we go into game three, I'm gonna snap back to reality because this is the this is how it goes for Ganondorf, and this is how it goes for for Simon. You break zone on a Belmont, and there's not much else to really speak to. The most that he could really do is his uppercut. Yeah. Like, the up special is the only way to really break off any pressure, and it's not really that great of a tool for that to begin with. And not to mention, if you have a player who is aware of that and, you know, playing around that, you go for up B, you know, recklessly when they air dodge down, suddenly you're just bait food for more combos. So it is a really um, dangerous situation you got to be aware of. The, I, I think that was definitely the stage that hurt them more than anything, so I can't see um, Rickles and Moose wanting to go back to Pokemon Stadium too. But again, this I mean, if you lose game one, you have to win your opponent's counter pick, and this is their situation where they need to make sure that they can win. But let's see what stage has been chosen by these competitors as we see the same characters coming through. Same they stage? do take it back to PS2. I think the stage isn't too bad because it worked well for them in the beginning. It's just like Red Team started to get themselves back together and they weren't letting themselves get hit as freely. One tool of note is the smash attacks from Ripple. Seeing up smash and forward smash <clears throat> clear the space so effectively, put down a lot of damage very quickly is what I feel let Yellow Team get ahead so far in game one and keep things in game two super close. If it, Rickles doesn't get a chance to swing like that, if he doesn't get set up by Moosh, then Yellow Team has to work a lot harder to end out those stocks. And while Red Team is living on a timer, the longer that timer is, the more they're able to establish stage control because that's where Rob really gets a chance to shine and where Wolf gets to take the most advantage of is when he's got more room to maneuver. That is the big issue, as you just said. Um, that Yellow Team, their whole thing is, you know, securing KOs early or being lame with their KOs. Looking at you, Belmont. So uh, it's just one of those things where they have to play the character right. At, if they get broken out, well, how do they recover? I don't think they do unless their opponent really messes up. Um, so right now, like right now, we have Moosh fighting a wolf close range. That's not what you want. You better run away, run behind Ganondorf. Actually, yo, imagine having the king of all evil as someone to run behind. How safe would you feel? It's like a big old giant blanket. I mean, every Legend of Zelda game is basically spending, like, anywhere between, like, 5 to 20 hours trying to run up on Ganon. Unless, really unless it's Beth of the Wild, then you just go right to him. Oh, you can, you can just straight up waltz in on him. Yeah, man. No, not, not Mother, huh? But, like, point is, is that no matter what, he's setting up a big wall, and you got to try to run past that wall. If that is your wall, 
Belmont's looking pretty safe, and that's what Moosh has been doing a lot more of in Game 3. Sterling and Rickles take the lead, try and defend the ledges, but also when Rickles loses control, Moosh dives right for center stage and tries fighting outwards from center stage. And I think that's a brilliant plan, making good use of the Belmont's tools, because then at the very least, he has his down tilt and decent maneuverability to just get out of dodge, head to the ledge, and start playing all over again. I mean, they, they said they made their down smash connect more. You only need a one hit, and that's that second one. Dorian blasting Rob into the blast zone. And right now, I think that was a down here coming out from the Rob securing the KO against Rickles. So now we have a stock situation where Moosh is actually the huge target. Two stocks and um, triple digit damage. Yeah, you definitely need to be playing your game, which means that Rickles needs to be defending him as much as possible. What do you do? How do you do that when you're being fair to oblivion between Rob and Wolf respectively? Oh, oh, hitbox extension from the rock completely eliminates Moosh as well. It leaves everyone on their last stocks. Yeah, this isn't good. Now, this is the situation where it's interesting. We have a Ganondorf, clearly a damage, uh, clearly a target, but it's a Ganondorf with near rage. Uh, I, I don't know if I want to go near that gloomy. Especially at the ledge. Rickles does have that suicide option with Flame Choke if need be. Yeah, no, I don't think he's going to go for it. I think there's more value in letting Ganon just sort of stick around hit hard while he has the chance to. Because every one to two hits that he gets is still, like, just that little oh! bit less of control that Red Team has. And now, Red Team's down on Ralphie. This is Till's game to play now. But right now, Rob is controlling ledge. He has the lowest damage. He has all the projectiles in the world. No! Be careful with that whip, my dude. Be careful with the oh, cross, my dude. The cross actually He's saved evil. him. The cross actually gave him just enough height to be able to come back, and Moosh was aware that it was going to be the weak hit. Yellow team is killing themselves. They had such a good opportunity. You had to get it with 173. Go protect them, my dude. Yo, this, I'm going to have a heart attack from this match. Come on, please. I'm watching a, I'm watching a Belmont approach on a Rob while getting oh, big no, shot. Oh, no. Oh, yes. I, I got to admit, I haven't seen that combo actually pulled off in a long time. I, I kind of popped off. It's been a minute. That's classic, but wow, it was nice to see. You feel yourself. Tio's walking away with the victory over HO3K, Dylan Ralphie, in the most unlikely of ways. I really didn't expect to see Gannon and Belmont like that today. Meat and muscle, might and magic. Those guys are out here in the fullest. But I think for all the meat and muscles they have, they're not really so bright. I just saw so, so many team hits in that moment, and it, it Took a situation was, that was kind of bad, but also really good to, oh, we're messing up. No, nah, I think it was tactical. I think the way that Moosh was trying to keep Rickles like juggled up with projectiles, give him a little bit higher in the air, but not kill him. Make sure that he has options for landing. But and when Rickles you come was smart about it. But then you have you have to come back. And while you're, you know, helping your partner, who I still feel confident could have came back, you're having your back turned to your opponent. You don't turn your yeah. back to your opponent in 